The movie opens on the planet of Pandora, where Jake Sully provides a recap of his experiences since he became the leader of the Omotakia tribe and a member of the Navi. He and Nadiri have become parents to three children, Nedium, Loak, and Tuk, as well as to an adopted daughter named Kiri, who is the offspring of Grace Augustine's Navi avatar. The kids spend time with a human child named Spider who was left behind by the previous group of human scientists. Despite the close relationship between the kids and Spider, Nateri feels that the boy would be better off with other humans, due in part to her disdain for the Sky People. Although things seem perfect, Jake's joy is soon shattered when shuttles carrying Ardia ships arrive and start wreaking havoc on Pandora, destroying vast portions of the forest and killing the animals. Jake and Nateri quickly evacuate their children and other Navi to safety, but they stand in shock as they witness the destruction left behind. A year later, Colonel Miles Querich is resurrected in his avatar form. He launches an attack on his former comrades, all of whom are now in their Navi skins. Upon watching a video he recorded before the previous mission, Querich realizes what happened. After acquiring new weapons, he sets his sights on returning to Pandora with a singular objective, to kill Jake. The RDA has established a colony on Pandora, complete with a mining facility and a town known as Bridgehead City. Jake takes charge, leading a group of Navi to attack the human aircraft and supply lines using their Ikrans. Meanwhile, Spider joins Loak and Kiri on a visit to the Human Research Center where Norm Spellman and Max Patel are still working. Kiri speaks with Grace's avatar, which is in stasis, as Kiri fully experiences the environment. The other kids spot Querich and his team inspecting the former linking unit for the humans and their avatars. Querich discovers his own bones inside the amp suit where he was killed. The villains come across the children and realize that they belong to Jake because of their five fingers. Querich encounters Spider and discovers that he is his son. He summons Ardmore and her troops while taking the other children as hostages. Upon hearing the news, Jake and Nadiri arrive on the scene, both shocked to see their enemy alive in a Navi body. Nadiri kills some of Querich's team before they open fire, managing to retrieve the children. Querich and his surviving accomplices retreat, taking Spider with them. Ardmore tries to extract information about the clan's location through torture but Querich intervenes and decides to try and gain Spider's trust. He convinces Spider to accompany him on the mission, warning that the scientists will experiment on him if he doesn't. Jake and Nadiri decide to leave their clan, as it is being targeted by the villains. They take their children and fly their Ikrin to the home of the Metkaina clan of the Navi, located on the eastern seaboard. The clan leader, Tanawari, is initially wary of the half-human heritage of Jake and his children and their potential to bring danger to their land. However, he eventually allows them to stay and instructs his own children, Aoning and Syria, to teach Jake's kids how to adjust to their oceanic environment. Jake passes on his leadership role to another warrior, Tarsim, before departing with his family. Querich and his crew escort Spider through the jungle, utilizing Spider's ability to translate the Navi language which the team is still in the process of comprehending. Querich successfully connects himself to his own Ikrin, using more brute force than the Omotaki employed. Jake's children join forces with Aoning, Syria, and Rotkso, Aoning's friend, as they venture to the reef. Syria demonstrates their ability to communicate with the aquatic creatures through sign language and to bond with them in a manner similar to the way the Omotaki bond with their own animals. Jake and Nadiri are then instructed on how to operate the Tsurik which has the capability to move both in the air and underwater. Loak grows closer to Tsiria, who teaches him to improve his underwater breathing. Tsiria also takes Loak and his sisters to deeper underwater depths by using creatures that supply air when they rest on their backs. However, Aoning and Rotkso exhibit hostility towards Kiri due to her status as a half-breed, which leads to Loak striking Aoning in the face. Nedium joins the altercation along with Aoning's companions, resulting in Jake reprimanding his sons for their actions. Jake compels Loak to apologize to Aoning, which he does. In response, Aoning invites Loak to hunt with him and his friends. They venture far enough until Aoning and his associates trick Loak into pursuing a creature, just before an Akul attacks and kills Loak's mount. 
before pursuing him. Loak tries to swim back to the surface before he runs out of air, but the Akula tries to make a kill until Loak is saved by a tall coon, a whale-like creature named Payakan. Loak follows Payakan and discovers a harpoon stuck in its fin, which he removes and there Byron's Payakan's trust. Jake converses with Kiri, who lately has experienced a change due to her visions. She asserts that she can detect the pulse of their deity Awa, and it is powerful. Jake reassures her that her feelings are normal. Later, everyone observes Loak's return, and Tonawari criticizes Aoning for taking Loak beyond the reef, which is not allowed. Nevertheless, Loak accepts responsibility for the situation to protect Aoning from punishment. Jake informs Loak that his actions have brought dishonor to their family, yet Aoning gains admiration for Loak. Loak informs his siblings, as well as Tsiria and the other members of Metkaina about his meeting with Payakan. However, Syria informs Loak that Payakan is seen as a pariah among the Tulkun. After Loak tries to make contact with Payakan to gain knowledge of his background, Syria takes the group to the cove of their forebears and showcases the appearance of the land during an eclipse. She also leads them underwater to the Metkaina Tree of Souls. When Kiri establishes a connection with the tree, she gains the ability to see and communicate with Grace. Sadly, Kiri experience is a devastating seizure, and her siblings bring her back to shore. Jake seeks assistance from Norm and Max to help Kiri, but they are unable to assist until Ronal steps in and successfully revives Kiri. Norm informs Jake that Kiri's visions could possibly be caused by frontal lobe epilepsy. Unfortunately, Lyle Wayne Fleet, a teammate of Quaritch, informs him of a radar signal detected by the gunship that brought Norm and Max. The villains then collaborate with a whaling ship captained by McScorsby and manned by Doctory and Garvin to gain a greater advantage as they already hunt Tulkun for anti-aging remedies. The members of Metkaina form close relationships with their Tulkun, including Ronal and her sister Roa. Unfortunately, Quaritch and his crew soon arrive. They viciously slay a Tulkun and intimidate a Metkane a woman to reveal Jake and his family's location. Spider is horrified and tries to persuade his father to halt the violence. The villains then proceed to set fire to their trees and homes. Quaritch orders his team to launch an attack in an effort to lure Jake to them. Loak again attempts to inquire from Payakan about the reason for his banishment. Payakan opens his mouth allowing Loak to enter and form a connection with him. Loak views Payakan's memories and learns that he attacked the whalers because they murdered his mother and family. Loak tries to convey this new information to the Metkaina, but Jake tries to silence him to avoid further causing a rift between the Metkaina. Loak confides in Syria about this and she trusts in him. The whaling crew initiates their assault, launching harpoons filled with inflatables that puncture the fins of the Talkoon including Roa and her offspring. After collecting samples from her, Ronal and other members of the Met Kane arrive, and Ronal grieves in heartbreak over the loss of her sister and her child. Tonawari and Ronal, along with many outraged Met Kane, direct their anger toward Jake for bringing the villains to their land, as he had predicted. Jake highlights that the Talkoon will now be targeted for death with the trackers of the whalers, and urges the Metkaina to warn the Talkoon before more of them are killed. Loak sets out to inform Payak and despite Nedium's cautionary advice. He's accompanied by his brother, Syria and Aeoning, followed by Kiri and Tuk. They find Payakan has already been hit by a tracker. Nedium alerts Jake and Nadiri head to save their children. The whalers launch their attack and target the children and Talkoon. Jake and Nadiri are joined by warriors from Metkaina in the battle. The children are captured during the conflict and held captive on the ship. When Jake and the others arrive, Quaritch demands that he surrender, holding Loak at gunpoint to demonstrate his determination. Jake is ready to give himself up until Payakan sees his sole brother in danger and jumps out of the water crashing onto the ship and taking down some of the whalers. At this juncture, the Navial launch into battle with assistance from Payakan and the Metkaina. With their combined efforts, they successfully eliminate most of the whalers. Scoresby tries to spear Payakan, but he wraps the wire around the boat, causing the death of the men and cutting off Scoresby's arm. The children manage to escape, and Kiri employs her abilities to control the ocean. 
leading to the death of some whalers. Spider also switches sides and reunites with his Navi family. During the battle, Nedium saves his siblings and friends, but he gets shot. The family takes refuge on a rock and tries to save Nedium, but he dies from his injuries. Nadiri expresses her heart-trenching grief at the loss of her son, and the rest of the family is deeply mourning. Quaritch contacts Jake and reveals that he has Kiri and Tuke as hostages. Jake, accompanied by Nadiri, Spider, and Loak, ventures into the sinking vessel for the final confrontation. Nadiri slaughters Quaritch's team in revenge for Nedium's death as Jake prepares to face his adversary. After freeing Tuk, Quaritch emerges with Kiri and a knife to her neck. Nadiri takes Spider and uses him as leverage. Although Quaritch tries to deny his connection with the boy, he eventually releases Kiri after Nadiri hurts Spider. Nadiri takes the children to safety, and Jake decides to engage Quaritch in a fight to the death. The vessel starts sinking trapping the family beneath the water. Jake fights Quaritch until he gets him in a choke hold and allows him to sink. Loak finds his father, who tells him to leave without him since Jake believes he won't make it, but Loak assists him in breathing with the technique Syria taught him, and they escape along with Payakan. Meanwhile, Kiri calls upon the underwater creatures to help her rescue Nadiri and Tuk. Spider swims to save Quaritch, but he leaves him behind due to his evil actions and rejoins Jake's family. Jake formally adopts him as his son. Before leaving, Jake prepares to say goodbye to Tanawari, but Tanawari tells Jake that he and his family are now part of the Metkaina and are welcome to stay. The family holds a funeral for Nedium, where his body is offered to the Tree of Souls, and they are told that he has joined Dewa. Jake and Nadiri connect with the tree, where they are able to see Nedium through memories. Jake recognizes this land as his new home, and vows to continue to fight and protect his family. And the movie ends here. Please subscribe to this channel and share with your friends and family. Thank you.